Well, I'd like to say thank you to Dr. Woodward for her presentation. I'd like to say also thank you to the audience for attending. Um, we have a few minutes uh, here for Q&A if anyone has any questions. Uh, please remember to type them into the questions box at the bottom of your screen um, and just press send. If you don't press send, we don't see it. Um, and then also for those of you who are getting CEU and CCA credits, uh, be sure to sign out via the audience chat box. Um, just type your name into the chat box, your um, whether it's CEU or CCA credits, and then um, the state. So with that, uh, I'd like to take uh, any questions that the audience might have for Dr. Woodward at this time. Okay, um, question here is uh, hemp cannabis is a heavy feeding plant. Have you seen any correlation between disease pressure and nutrient deficiencies? Okay, can you, can you hear me okay right now? I can um, hear you. So the, there, I don't think there's been any kind of real research that's been looking at as far as uh, um, nutrition and disease on hemp. But if plants are actually nutritionally dip, uh, um, stressed, they tend to have more disease problems, particularly a lot of the leaf spot problems. Um, so I will see a lot more of that um, and a lot more even leaf drop associated with the diseases when the plants are actually nutritionally stressed. So we will get an increase in disease. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, Gene. Any more questions? Oh, what was the most common disease that you saw come through the lab on him? Okay. Um, two diseases, one was Southern blight. Well, actually through the lab, the most common diseases we had were actually the leaf spot diseases. And they primarily were either the um, bipolaris leaf spot or the um, coronespora leaf spot. The, um, in the field, though, it seemed like we were seeing more of the, um, the southern blight was actually what was actually killing the plants and like taking out some of the fields. But leaf spots are probably our number one problem. Great, thank you so much, Gene. Um, good question, good question. Any more new questions? All right, well, um, if we, oh, here we go. Another question. Do you see the same types of disease pressure for indoor versus outdoor groves? Um, I have not, well, I would expect to, yes. Um, so we primarily within the indoor groves, I'm expecting to see a lot more of the powdery mildew and some of the botrytis. Um, powdery mildew affecting the leaves and botrytis affecting the buds um, and the, the flowers. The um, outdoor, we tend to see more of the leaf spot diseases. Um, the one thing for me is I have not actually been inside a lot of the indoor grows, so I don't know if that's true um, or be able to tell you from what I've seen, but that's what I would expect just because of the lower the 
less air circulation within the, the houses, as well as just the climate within those on um, the, the greenhouse environment, we're going to see a lot more of the powdery mildew and the botrytis than we do out in the field. Awesome. Thank you. Doesn't look like we're getting any more questions here. Um, I don't see any more. Um, that I think uh, folks might be uh, jumping out to go to the, the next talk, which starts uh, in about a minute or so. Um, so with that, um, I'd like to say thank you to Dr. Woodward uh, for uh, recording your talk and, and being here today to answer questions. Um, again, I'd like to thank those of you that have attended. And then, of course, if, if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out after the conference. Uh, both myself and, and Dr. Woodward are available to, to answer questions as, as well uh, that you may have. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to our um, tech support. Um, oh, oh, that was Just a comment. Comment. great talk. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>